In this video, we will do a technical deep dive on integrating VMware vCenter with Cisco ACI. And then we will implement micro segmentation on top of this integration. This is going to be 100% hands on covering ACI as well as vCenter configurations. So let's take a look at our example. In this example, we will be configuring ACI to learn virtual machine endpoints and automatically categorize them into an endpoint group called all service. In next step, what we will do is we will create what ACI calls micro segment EPGs to micro segment VMs based on their names into Ubuntu or Windows service. So Ubuntu VMs that are starting with the name Ubuntu will automatically go into the micro segment Ubuntu server and VMs that, that start with the name Windows will automatically go into micro segment named Windows service. In the end, we will be testing moving a VM out of a micro segment just by renaming. So we will rename VM2 instead of Ubuntu, we are going to call it CentOS and it will move that particular VM automatically outside of this micro segment. In order to get started with micro segmentation and VMM integration, there are two main components of the topology. The vCenter and the APIC controller. We need to be sure that we have connectivity even between the management port of vCenter and the out-of-band management port of the ACI fabric. There is a way to configure this via in-band management as well, but I won't be covering that in this video. In my case, I will be using vCenter 6.5 and ESX host 6.5. In VMware terminology, I have created this data center called security ESX with some VMs in it and uh, there, are, there are three ESX hosts. If there is a mismatch between the code versions, for example, if you're using 6.5 vCenter and your ESX is still at 6.0, we might have a little, we have to be a little careful uh, with this integration. I will point that out as and when we get there. As of right now, when we look at the networking, I just have one network in this uh, security ESX cluster. And all the VMs that I have in that cluster are hanging off this particular network. The first step for the integration is to go to the APIC controller under the VM networking tab. We create a vCenter domain. I'm going to call it as test v center domain it's important for us to select the correct aep the moment we uh, select a wrong aep or if you want to change an aep we just cannot do that we'll have to delete and recreate so once we do that select it and click on submit and i'll add more configurations a little later so okay the AEP pops up we have to create a VLAN pool I'm gonna go create a VM VLAN pool okay it popped up um, now next we configure the vCenter credentials and we specify the password. Now next, we define the vCenter itself. And remember I was talking about ESX um, version versus the vCenter version. So this is where it gets um, uh, important. So if I'm not using the same version as the vCenter, I need to select a lower level of DVS. So over here, since my ESX is 6.5 and vCenter is also 6.5, I'm going to just select vCenter default. 
Now data center is pretty important. Remember we selected the data center as I created a data center called security ESX. I need to specify that over here. Task collection, I'm going to leave it disabled. Management EPG, if you're creating an in-band management, um, uh, then it needs to go over here. Credentials, vCenter credentials that we had created earlier. Next is port channel policies. I already have an, a policy called LACP active. I'm going to enable LDP. I'm going to enable CDP. I'm going to click on submit. Okay, so the moment this is done, if the integration was successful, you will see a bunch of hypervisors in here. So you see how three hypervisors popped up and there are virtual machines under these hypervisors. So that means the first step was successful. Now once this is done, on the vCenter side, if you go take a look over here, you see how to test vCenter domain this popped up and now there is a DVS test vCenter domain that is listed over here. Now first thing we need to do is associate this DVS to all the ESX hosts. So I go over here, select task, add hosts, select hosts, selected all hosts. Okay, select network adapter. I'm going to leave it as default. Manage physical networks. Now, NIC0, I'm using it uh, for, for connectivity to vSwitch0. I'm not going to modify that. Rest of the NICs, NIC1, 2, and 3 are connected to ACI fabric. Okay, so once this is done, click on next, next, no impact, finish. All right, so the DVS side is complete. Um, now, next section, let's now configure the EPG uh, and the application profile on ACI. So go to ACI, go to my tenants, go to my test tenant, create an application profile. The application profile is created. Now let's create an EPG. Actually, this EPG, I'm going to call it all servers. So basically all servers are going to be part of this application profile. Once I go to this EPG in domains, now this is where it links that particular EPG to the VMM domain. So I right click and I click on VMM domain. Now, this is where it gets interesting. And this is where you need to make an architectural decision. If micro segmentation is unchecked, that means that it, on the DVS level, it's going to allow east-west traffic within the VMware kernel. If allow micro-segmentation is checked, there wouldn't be any east-west traffic at the DVS level. All the east-west traffic needs to hit the switch and then go back into the ESX host. So if you are, you have to, if you have to be very careful or if you need to drive up efficiencies on east-west traffic on the same ESX host uh, at the DVS level, then you might want to reconsider your micro-segmentation strategy. However, for the most part, usually this is not a problem. Um, so, I'm, and, and again, since this is a demo for micro-segmentations, I'm going to check this allow micro-segmentation box. And again, if I check this box, all the traffic from uh, within the DVS within the same ESX host will not go at the kernel level. It will go out, hit the switch, and then go back into the ESX host. 
So the moment I click on submit, if I go back to my vCenter, okay, so here it comes. This is the port group that ACI created on this particular DVS. So you see how this naming convention works? It's your tenant name, application profile name, and the EPG name. So tenant test, top and test tenant one, top and test tenant one, VMM use case to application profile, VMM use case to application profile, and all server EPG. So all server EPG. So next thing what we need to do is we need to go to our hosts and associate each and every VM with that particular port group. So go to the first yeah, show more networks. Let's select this one. Okay. All right. Now, the, now, since all the VMs have been put in the right port group, if I go back to ACI, I'm going to see these VMs pop up over here under all servers. You see how Ubuntu test VM 1, 2, and then Windows VMM 3. So this is kind of our step one. We were able to identify the VMs and put them into this particular endpoint group called all servers. Now another thing to note over here is you might see VMM everywhere and then you would see learn. So that means this is the particular leaf and port where it learned that particular VMM. Uh, sorry, that particular VM at, and it also will give you, you know, the, the VLANs that is leveraging for that particular VM. Now that this is done, our next step is to do real micro segmentation. So this is where we draw a line and say, hey, our VMM integration is complete. Um, so you might want to say, hey, I just want to do VMM integration. I do not want to, I do not wish to do any micro segmentation and that's fine. So this is where the VMM integration is completed. The so next step is to create a micro segment. Let's create a micro segment EPG. I'm going to call it Ubuntu service. I'm selecting the same bridge domain as all servers, but you can you can select a different bridge domain, different IP addressing scheme, and that's fine. There's also EPG match precedence if you know there are multiple and more complex micro segmentation policies. But but I'm going to leave everything as default. And next thing that I'm going to do is going to configure micro segment attributes. Select type. I'm going to do it on the VM name. Starts with Ubuntu. Okay. I'm going to click on submit. So, all right. So, all the VMs whose names start with Ubuntu are going to be part of this VMM domain. If I go to Ubuntu server, operational now I see both these VMs over here now similarly I'm going to create another micro segment for Windows now one thing before we get there if I look at this EPG look at the operational tab you see how Windows VM is over here as part of all servers instead of being part of Windows servers. Now this is going to go away the moment I configure the micro segment attribute. I would see that Windows VM over here and I probably won't see any VMs. No VMs are listed over here. All right, so now Basically, these two Ubuntu VMs are part of one endpoint micro segment, and Windows VM is part of another micro segment. See how micro segment of Ubuntu servers VM1 and VM2 are part of this, 
and VM3 is part of Windows servers. Now, the, there's a way we could test it. So this is VM1. Um, this one is VM2. And this one is VM3. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and ping. Uh, sorry, 10.0.0. .0 .0 dot 11 which is this guy itself it's working dot 12 which is the other ubuntu vm and dot 13 should not work which is the windows vm you see how 13 is not working similarly on this guy um, if i ping dot 11 it's working dot 13 is not working which is the windows vm and of course on windows vm if i ping dot 11 it's not working dot 12 is also not working because both of them are ubuntu vms however ping to the default gateway and ping to itself is working all right now next thing and this is more of a um, security question like hey if I have a VM that had some kind of a problem or a VM that I want to do some forensics on or I just want to pull it out or things like that can I do it on the fly yes you can now if I go back over here and I go to this Ubuntu VM VMM test 2 and I rename this let's say I rename it to let's say um, I'm going to call it, let's say, quarantine. Something happened with this VM and I changed the VMM's, VM's name, put it on quarantine. So the moment I put it on quarantine, you should see this policies on this VM update. So you see how quarantine, since it says quarantine, it doesn't fit into these micro segment EPGs. And it's part of all the servers now as a result we will not so from test one you will not be able to ping 12 which was ubuntu test 2 vm as well as dot 13 which is the windows vm so in, in essence basically this vmm test 2 um, so the, the the vm2 was was quarantined uh, so that's pretty much it for micro segmentation. I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned with Tech Talks with Tappan.